Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do for these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff from which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you. On the rock of Horeb, strike the rock, and water will come out of it. Say that the people may drink. Moses did so. 
in the sight of the elders of Israel, he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Hear what the Lord is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If then there is an encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who thought he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the God the Father. Therefore, in my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you and enabled you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
I'm so glad today to be able to welcome Tammy Morris as our guest preacher. Tammy is an elder in her church and the program director at Grace House, which is the women's program of St. Leonard's Ministries. St. Leonard's empowers formerly incarcerated men and women to lead whole and productive lives. It is part of the Episcopal Charities here in the Diocese of Chicago. And people who complete the program have transformed lives by evidence of an exceptionally low recidivism rate with 95% of women and 84% of men remaining free after completing the St. Leonard's program. Welcome, Tammy. And today, the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings from St. Leonard's Ministries. My name is Tammy Morris, and I am the program director of Grace House, which is the Women's Division of St. Leonard's Ministries. St. Leonard's Ministries provides residential and supportive services to men and women exiting the Illinois prison system. Our mission is to empower formerly incarcerated men and women to lead whole and productive lives. We're thankful today to share with you a thought from one of the readings found in Philippians, the second chapter, 1 through 13, and then share with you more information about St. Leonard's Ministries programs, Grace House, and the services. Philippians 2.13 offers a wonderful perspective on the life of Jesus Christ and his walk of humility and the plan that God had for all mankind. Jesus Christ humbled himself or yielded himself as the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. And his very act opened the way for everyone and anyone who would believe in him to have salvation and new abundant life. Humility is the act of yielding one's whole self to a process or a journey. And in doing so, transformation occurs at the heart level. It can look like service to others or like yielding the right of way to another driver in traffic or not repaying evil for evil or not having to have the last word in an argument or just taking the high road. Humility is powerful in that it can change the outcome of a relationship impacting lives forever. First Peter five and five says that we'd be clothed in humility for God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And here at St. Leonard's Ministries, we see lives being transformed through humility. Men and women yielding themselves to their process of change, second chances, more chances, more grace, and more mercy with God's help. There's a much bigger 
brighter light shining over our men and women than there is darkness and we are greater and we are stronger for that reason. Now I want to introduce to you one of our residents and her name is uh, Wendy Jarvis and she's just going to share a little of her story and what humility means to her. Thank you Miss Tammy. I've been living at Grace House now for two months and the biggest thing I've learned is that you have to have a sense of community. There are 20 women here, we're all from different backgrounds, we've all had different experiences, but we come together as one house and we make it a good place to live. We support each other and we're learning how to build better lives. When I heard the topic was humility, it made me think of a phrase that I've always loved, which is, there but for the grace of God go I. And we all had our trials, we've all had our troubles in life, and everyone deserves a second chance. I'm very grateful that Grace House was here to give me a second chance. Wow. Thank you, Wendy. We are grateful that you are here with us. St. Leonard's Ministry services approximately 120 men and women. We offer interim housing where residents can live with us anywhere from six to nine months. We have interim housing for our men where 40 men live in two locations and interim housing for our women here at Grace House where 20 women, as Wendy said, can stay with us. Grace House is home away from home where we provide clothing and food and case management services, substance use intervention. We offer behavioral health counseling services through Adler University. We work with nurses from Rush University Medical Center to provide medical care for our women. We offer life skills, domestic violence groups, anger management groups, and spiritual enrichment groups, and much, much more. We also have permanent supported housing programs for our men and women, St. Andrew's Court or Harvest Common, where they get a chance to live independent while still having the support of St. Leonard's Ministries, staff and programs and services. Then we have our Marco Barlow Center as well. And this is where they learn job skills and they get an opportunity to complete um, financial literacy classes, computer classes, if they're in need of completing their high school diploma, there's a 14 week adult high school completion program where they can graduate and literally walk across the stage. We have culinary training classes. We have our construction classes, both basic and advanced. And then we have job placement services where our residents can work directly with a job specialist to do job search and to complete applications. We could not do this work without the support of community partners, volunteers, donors, and friends. So if you are moved to help support our mission, here's how you can join in. Become a volunteer. We have various group projects that help to support our advancement. Or you can become a mentor for one of the women at Grace House, partnering with them to help them along their journey. And ultimately, make a financial donation by clicking our donation button on our website www.slministries.org. No donation is too small because every dollar helps to change a life. Well, we appreciate you giving us this time to share and we look forward to our continued partnership in changing lives with God's love. If you have any questions and need more information, please feel free to contact our executive director, Erwin Mayer at 312 seven eight zero three one nine zero okay until we meet again we say blessings to you bye bye we believe in one god the father the almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one lord jesus christ the only son of god eternally begotten of the father god from god light from light true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humility and confidence, let us confide to God our hopes and needs, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not know God's love, that God's love may be known among them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples who claim God as their creator, that we may be at peace with one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in the shadows and margins of society, that they might continue to be the special object of God's love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we might know the meaning of compassion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the needs of others and for ourselves. We remember those who are sick or in need. We pray for those who have died and those who mourn, especially for Ruth. We ask you to bless the work of members of this community to serve others, especially this week for our formation programs. And with grateful hearts, we celebrate the blessings in our lives. God, you are a God of mercy, a God who does not deal with us according to our sins, nor make your love contingent on our good behavior. Be merciful to your people and hear our prayers for those who are in need. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life the peace of the lord be always with you i'm chris roberts and i'm the treasurer here at st luke's and also a member of the vestry so glad that you chose to worship with us today and i have a few announcements many thanks to the folks at st leonard's for being with us today our own Mike Roan will be around for coffee hour today to talk about his experience on their board. We're putting together our autumn mailings. If you're not already on our physical mailing list and would like to receive our autumn mailings, please contact the office, which is simply office at stlukesevanston.org. If you would like to interact with other folks from St. Luke's during the service to share your prayer requests, feedback, and community life, please watch through our Facebook premiere each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Go to the Facebook page for information. We have a few spots left for next Sunday's Outdoor Spoken Eucharist in Baker Park, which is nearby at Keeney and Forest Avenue at 10 a.m. You can sign up through Friday's newsletter. Again, contact the office via email, if not on the mailing. Lastly, as treasurer and vest member, Feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any questions about the church finances. The St. Luke's website will have contact information. Thanks for being with us virtually today and have a wonderful week.
Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Since we cannot share in the body and blood of Christ at this time, you are invited to join me in a modified version of St. Augustine's prayer for spiritual communion. The very intention to receive is enough to receive the spiritual blessing of the sacrament. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with all the faithful prevented from gathering at your table because of the pandemic, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.